Hello, welcome, I'm Claudia. It's time to check in on the import plants that arrived in less than great condition. I kept them in that two bin setup with the light for most of the time. I want to say only like the last week and a half, maybe two weeks, I removed the top of bin a little so that more airflow could start getting into the bin, but I never noticed any condensation or anything like that, so I'm not sure what humidity was really like in there. The only thing to know is I haven't needed to refill any of the reservoirs with water. I'm not really sure at this point if I filmed a check-in with them or not or if this is just going to be the first time that we're really looking at them. I did peek through the bin almost daily just to kind of see what was going on in there. And based on what I can see there, I think it's time for us to completely bring them out of the bin, look at the roots and repot into soil, anything that's ready and start the transition into the rest of the family. So here's the bin. I will bring this top bin out. I'm gonna remove the top. I'll set you down so that you can see exactly what I see. And then we'll go one by one and inspect the roots, see if they're ready to be transferred or if they need more time to root. Okay, I have to say first impressions are good. Wow, look at these insane aerial roots. Um, the Florida and the Pelopidoides. Okay, all right. I'll, um, I guess we can just start bringing them out one by one and see what it looks like. Oh my gosh, look at these aerial roots. I was just going back and checking. I received these December 21st and today is February 22nd, so like two months on the dot. I am so happy to see that fried egg has a variegated leaf. Just can't wait. Okay. What should we start with first? It's too exciting. Um, I'm gonna start with the Silver Blush Anthurium because I think it's going to stay in that setup for a while. Here it is. Got three itty bitty leaves, which is good. I'm so glad this guy is growing. Such a cutie. It just looks so cute. Um, I believe these are aerial roots. Maybe it needs some moss so it can start grabbing on to um, the medium. I'm trying to see if I can see any of the roots, which I can't really, to be honest. But yeah, I can't really see any roots. But this is looking very nice. So cute! I wasn't sure this guy was gonna make it, to be honest. And I was really concerned because it's an anthurium and I don't have a lot of experience with them to begin with. And when it arrived, like, all the leaves weren't gonna make it. And yeah, I was just, I was really nervous. So I'm really glad and happy to see these. Um, this is going to stay in this exact setup for a while until it outgrows this little pot situation. So for today, all I'm gonna do, um, wash the reservoir and replace this water with a fresh batch of my nutrient-rich cocktail, and it should be good to go here, on, you know, for the foreseeable future until it's ready for a bigger home. This is so exciting. I am so, so happy this guy seems to be pulling through. Next, we'll do the fry deck because it's also going to stay in that pond setup I did. Here she is. Oh my gosh, I can see a ton of roots in here. Which is so good. Remember how 
stinky this was. And I am so happy. Look at this newest leaf. It is gorgeous. I was a little bummed when this first one came out um, that it had <laughs> very, very minimal variegation. But it's also like to be expected, right? The plant was struggling, so it needed all the green that it could get so that it could provide for the plant to make more healthy roots and then start working on more beautiful foliage. But I can actually see a ton of roots in here. I'm so, so happy. And look at this leaf size. This is pretty impressive for the fact of it, it started from nothing all over again. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. This is so pretty. This one is also going to live in pond. I'm only going to add a nicer reservoir situation so that it's not, you know, in this thing. But otherwise, it's going. I'm not going to do anything to the pond or the roots or anything. Next, let's do the Hoya. I am so impressed. Both of the plants, if you remember, it was two of them. They are both growing. This is one and then this is the other. And I don't know if this super red comes from sun stressing, I guess, maybe. Um, but both plants are growing, which is super exciting. I can see a little bit of roots um, through here. It's gonna be really hard to see. But we're gonna bring this out of Fluval and I'm thinking I might try this in pond since it's used to semi-hydro and it is growing. I don't know that I want to mess with soil. Plus, I'm not really sure how strong of a root system it actually really has yet so it can continue growing really strong roots in pond and i've heard of other people growing hoyas with lots of success in pond so why not give it a go next up the pelopidoides i mean this guy is so cute um this is a brand new leaf how adorable oh this leaf is bent likely from the way that it was in the bins um, but I mean there's some damage there but that's like the original leaf it came with um, look at these aerial fuzzy roots they're so fuzzy and so long I would like to get this out of perlite and into my airy mix. I can see some roots here at the bottom, but I think I won't know for sure until I actually get it out of here. If the roots are actually enough to transfer to um, my airy mix yet, but we will check this out. And then also, I'm not sure if this is supposed to be on a pole. I assume probably yes, right? So I should probably look into that so that if I am repotting this, I just set it up on a pole right away because what am I waiting for? And finally, the Florida bronze. So I've gotten, this was the growth point that it had when it first came in and it finally unfurled. I wanna say like yesterday or two days ago, but look, there's already another one on the way, which is so exciting. And this also has crazy aerial roots. So my Florida ghost is on a moss pole. So I assume that this should probably go in a moss pole too, right? Florida beauty is going moss pole, that makes sense. Um, look at these crazy aerial roots, I can't believe it. And look at this color these come in. So beautiful. And the back even, look at that. This I can see a ton of roots. So my guess is this is perfectly fine to go ahead and transfer into my airy mix. Let's do the fry deck first because there isn't much to do there. So I basically have this vase. I filled it up with my nutrient rich cocktail and 
I figured out that this fits perfectly right in here. So this is its new home. How cute, right? Those beautiful leaves. I just cannot get over. So pretty. I actually, I doubt it. I'm like, I wonder if it has any corms, but that would be pretty impressive if it started producing corms while in recovery. <laughs> okay, so this is all set. I already mentioned this is staying exactly where it's at. Let's do the aglionema. So here she is. By the way, did I even show you this one? I may not even have shown you. I got this new leaf. And there's another one on the way. And I can't really see roots, so let's dig in and find out. Ooh, these roots look nice. One broke off there, but that's okay. There is a little bit of rotted roots. Not too much. That was it, just very little. Overall, it has very nice roots and it's growing, whoops, new ones also. Even these that are like brown are super firm. So that's really good. Great. The original roots rotting off are actually pretty common. Um, with imports, they're just shedding the old roots and getting new ones. So it's nothing to be concerned about. I wanna use clear pots for these. So fun fact, I know nothing about aglionemas. I've never had any. Um, this, is, this just looks massive, right? But then I feel like the next small size is too small. No, this will be perfect, actually. Okay. For all of these imports, I'm going to be using my Aeroid Mix. I'm adding some Myco for root health and to prevent transplant shock. I love it. Look at the soil. I I mean, I may be biased, but I just love the way that that looks. Okay, one down. Um, one, two, three more to go. Well, no, technically three down. Three more to go. Let's do the Florida bronze next. Let's just build the pole first. I mean, or I guess get it set up. This is a pole I used previously, so I just washed it. Um, and evidently couldn't be bothered to take it apart. Oh my gosh, I didn't even notice. Look at this. It's bright pink, like magenta. <gasps> oh, I think it made it. Okay. 
This root system is insane. I don't really need to remove all of the perlite, but I want it to fit in this pot, so that's the only thing. These roots are healthy. Mine is this one. Wow. Wow. So many roots. Actually, shoot, making a mess. There's like some that are really black. So I'm removing that. Should probably have my shears. I don't know why I don't. Don't ask. But in general, this is really, really healthy. And looking really good. Very to be of that. Yeah, this is wow, such an impressive root system. This is what this one's looking like. Let's do the Hoya next. So I already made my little uh, self-watering situation for this. And I do like to get rid of all the fluval, so I just brought a container with water so that we can take a look what the roots look like. This is actually pretty good. I am impressed. Oh, I thought I broke a leaf. I'm just removing all of the fluval. I don't like to keep any in there because if you've seen fluval when it disintegrates, it just becomes really like muddy and hard. So I don't really want that hanging out on the roots. So the roots are very, very tiny, but roots no less. So yay. Okay. Also very small and thin roots, but a lot of Hoyas have very like hair-like roots like this that are so thin and fragile, so I'm not worried about that. I am really impressed this one is making a comeback because it did not look good, if you remember. I'm wondering if this can lay down of sorts. There we go, like that. It would help if I was ready with the palm. Okay. Oops. Okay. 
And this is what she's going to look like. <gasps> I like to water upon all the way through the first time because there's quite a bit of sediment in it. Um, it makes the water pretty gross. So I like to rinse a little bit of that off. And then now I'll just fill the reservoir and add this guy right in there. And this will be its setup. But it can graduate and you know out of quarantine. I'm looking at Pelopidoidus to see if it should be in a moss pole. Um, I'm not seeing that. Okay, so I'm thinking I'm not going to do a moss pole even though it has those beautiful aerial roots. Look at this. And they're so white and fuzzy because of the humidity that was staying so consistent. I guess if I need to, I could just add a steak. Let's see if even these roots are good enough to be repotted. Yeah, before we get into further debates, yikes. I am going to say absolutely not ready. This is it. It's got another like little tiny one over here. It does seem to be growing some, but like very little. And yeah, so interesting. I'm wondering if I should keep it in perlite or potentially move to fluvo. I cannot believe how nothing these roots are and it's still growing leaves. These aerial roots are amazing. This is very, very unfortunate. I mean, it's still a really healthy plant and it still should, you know, continue to grow and hopefully develop more roots, but I am bummed that it's not ready for a more permanent situation. I mean, it's not broken, right? Maybe I should, I think I'm just gonna move to Fluval though, because this has been, in comparison to the rest, nothing is happening and yeah. Let's just move to Fluval. Back with the same uh, vessels I had it in before. I brought Fluval. And let's try that. I'm not going to remove whatever perlite is still on there. I think it's fine to keep. Going to put it in the reservoir and this time I don't remember if I did this last time or not but I'm giving it my nutrient-rich cocktail for the reservoir I think I did so you can see the water line and this is how this one will be and I just need to figure out where I'm gonna place it because I would like for it to continue to get a lot of humidity in case these aerial roots are providing Good energy for it they can continue to do so okay well he still looks very cute okay so they're all set up now and only one of the six was not ready to be transferred into a more permanent situation I think obviously the alocasia friedeck and the anthurium were already in a more permanent situation but they can all graduate out of 
quarantine rehab situation. I do want to continue and give the Pelopidoides really, really high humidity. So I may put it in my cabinet or I may put it in like a clear display box that I'm using as a faux greenhouse over in my laundry area just so that I can remember to kind of keep checking on the roots and see how this is doing. But the rest of them are all fully graduated and I can't wait to display them and place them around my home. I'm really, really happy. If you have any aglionema tips, please send them over because I have zero aglionemas, zero experience with them. And I do think it's beautiful and would love to grow it nice and beautiful and big. I mean, it's a tropical, so I mean, I think I can figure it out, but yeah. Um, any tips are welcome. <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, hope you'll give me a thumbs up. Hope you'll also subscribe to my channel and be notified when I upload new videos, and I will see you very soon. Thanks for watching.